So hello everyone and welcome to another podcast with my friend Anil where we break down the spiritual teachings which have been uh, channeled by me and Anil will also input his experience and knowledge of uh, all of these teachings because he is the one who is in helping with the uh, transcripts. So he has a vast knowledge of the channeled sessions and also uh, before the session begins i would be grateful if all of you could like the video uh, because it helps us out to continue uh, in this journey and it helps this video to reach to other people as well and also thank you to all of you who have subscribed to this channel because this is my second channel where we are uh, planning to share more uh, you know uh, uh, podcast sessions to help all of us uh, you know understand many of the channeling uh, messages which may sometimes be difficult so we are trying to break them down in simple language so today we are planning to talk about uh, buddha's teachings uh, specifically the three uh, important suggestions he gave during a channeling session uh, about how we can achieve graduation at this time and also uh, anil will share about how to uh, a method of how to overcome fear, anxiety, and mistrust, and all other type of uh, you know emotions which arise in our life cycle, and it's very helpful. So, I welcome Anil to the podcast. Welcome, Anil. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for giving me this opportunity of for being a service to others in a very small way. Um, and hello, everybody. Uh, so before we go, I just want to say that the purpose of this podcast is to raise the understanding and the vibration of current human collective. I would encourage each entity to approach these topics with an open mind and heart, seeking to understand the deeper spiritual truths and only accept those thought forms that resonate with your inner heart, leaving behind those that do not resonate with it. So today we're going to talk about uh, Buddha's direct advice, the most recent advice uh, which has been given uh, uh, in his only session uh, when uh, Sam channeled Buddha directly. It was one session uh, which was done on uh, 1st of March 2021 and only session with Buddha and he gave a direct advice and it's a very important, very simple three uh, things uh, they, uh, which he gave us, so which we're gonna uh, give it as a simplest self explanatory. And if you follow that, I am mo 100 more than uh, I mean, 200% sure that you will graduate in this graduation, upcoming graduation window. Okay, so um, there are three things that you need to do in this lifetime in order to graduate to four density in upcoming coming graduation which you know is the last six years and hope, you know you we got six year 2030 hopefully uh, it will move into a four density positive uh, um, planet the first thing is to uh, do is to keep your attention to your of your consciousness or awareness um, check to see where whether where it is in your body and what it is focusing in every moment of your life. Uh, so basically, um, what it is saying is that we have to know where is our focus, what we are consuming in our thoughts, or what we are thinking about every moment, where it is. Either we are in the past or present, in the present moment or future, that's what he's saying. And, and it is in our body, so we are grounded in that sense. So give attention and devote your attention to your awareness where therein lies the juice of your true self. So basically where it is attention that will tells you where your mind is and that's your being. The process of meditation assists in doing this. Simply keep your focus on the awareness in your body. So if your awareness and focus should be in the present moment, is in the present body. It should not be somewhere else. You are not dreaming or thinking about something else. And it's a very difficult uh, thing to admit because most of us are not are in the present moment ever. Either we are in the past or in the future, but not in the present moment. I think this simply saying to be present there and it really helps that you really find where exactly it is in your body. 
The second thing is to do is to detach from all the things that surround you, no matter how tasteful it may seem. This maya, this illusion will lead uh, from happiness to sadness, from sadness to ha happiness in an endless cycle. Uh, the only way to escape is to focus on yourself, not to become attached to this illusion and that surrounds you. So again, this is to let it go, uh, things, because people have very hard time letting things go and being attached. And it's like, you know, think about that, that, uh, you know, if, if you get hooked on something and, and what thing comes is that if you, let's say if, if a car is passing by you and suddenly uh, some piece of your cloth gets stuck in one of the corners of the class, you get dragged along it, you get hooked onto it and you need to learn how to unhook it so that you are not uh, dragged along with that thought which has just come to you you know or, or a vehicle which has taken to you so the thoughts can come and let them pass don't stay with it let them pass through you and don't get, get attached to any thought and then th this will pass on to if you start with a thought and you know when you start meditating so many thoughts come to us and people who have practiced this and even now even you close your eyes you have all these problems which is coming. But don't attach. Don't just go in. It happens. You know it will pass. And then it will then manifest itself um, in your life in terms of possession. Possession you know. I mean it's difficult. You know it's not an easy thing. Yes of course you when, when you're alive you are. But you're not going to take anything with you. It's just a number in the bank. You know. So yes we all need energy or abundance in life to live but I think not get attached to it in terms of this is the only thing you know oh I feel good because only when I have a million dollars in my account no to be happy and to feel abundance and satisfaction don't need a million dollars it's just a number you won't be able to even eat all of it you know uh, even if you eat the best food and, and all the best things you wouldn't it's just this Holding which we have been trained, indoctrinated, that this gives you security. Actually, it is it isn't. It it makes you the most insecure person on the planet, uh, because you've been trained to think this way. Yeah, because you think I have no money, so I I, I need to get money. And so sick, insecure and fearful all the time. So uh, so I know what. So please try to detail. This is the second thing. The third thing to do is to understand that everything you, uh, that everything is you, and there is a unity even in a stone, which will, after a certain time, turn into a soil, and which later on from soil into a plant or an animal or a human being. This stone that you think is worthless is not worthless. It belongs to the world. Uh, um, it's not, it belongs to the word of Maya, the illusion. But because it might be able to become also a human being and a split in the cycle of transformation, there it is the importance to realize within yourself that this stone is just not a stone. It is also an animal. It is also a god. It is also a Buddha. And it is also a you. So, and it is already and always everything. Similarly, you are already everything. And that's what just saying, as if you know that as a consciousness, we were in first density first. And from the first density, we became, in the first density, we, have, we were the elements. Either we start our life as a water, earth, fire, or wind. And then from the first density, we already moved into the second density where we become, uh, you know, the... Um, the animal or our plant life and then we becomes when we graduate from second density and all all of us have graduated from first and the second and now uh, it came to the third when we graduated from second and became human being so we have gone to this process twice of graduation this is our third time so we want to graduate and, and we, we can graduate it so that we already know 
So this stone is not useless. So everything is in us. We have become this and suddenly we're going to become four density, which we think now, you know, four density people are like kind of demigods or God. Everybody has their own idea or or fifth density people called Bhagwan or wanderers or sixth density, you know. They are higher beings and as Ra always said, don't defy us, don't worship us. We are just one of you. And and so I think we need to follow that. They are a guide, they are human beings, but we don't need to worship as such. I mean, you can pray at them, they can guide you, help us, all the things, but they specifically, Ra never said, don't uh, defy us, okay? Um, so this is the small three simple step but it takes time to uh, to things it's just a switch in your mind once it flakes it flakes so I would suggest that each of you try it and and it's just uh, once you get it is it becomes easy it becomes easy I mean it is difficult but at the same time it's also very easy you know uh, so these are only three things you need to understand in this life in order to graduate into a four density incoming graduation window. However, the experience of each entity will be different and you will face many obstacles in your life in order to put these three things into practice. To fully grasp the true nature of your illusion is to fully understand your reality and hope that you will go and experience this Maya, the illusion of illusion for yourself, not relying on any external teaching, but that which arises from within you. So this is again saying that you you don't see somebody, Messiah will come or somebody will help you. You have to help yours and you will get a lot of help, you know. So please try experience, trust in yourself. You don't need anything else. You just know these simple steps and you say, I need to implement this into action. I'm aware of it, I know this, but does not mean that is in your awareness. Knowing does not mean that only when it puts into action, then it means that you you are aware of it. Otherwise, it's just uh, something you know is information which has not been activated yet. And he, Buddha said something which really stuck with me. Uh, you know, he says that the knowledge can be conveyed, not the wisdom. It can only be experienced. And I tell you, I see that all the time uh, when I say something uh, to some people, uh, you know, they say, yes, I know, I know. But no, because if they know and they are doing it, they will be wise. But they don't do that. That means th there is no wisdom yet. And I don't expect, you know, Everybody, it takes takes time, wisdom with, with an experience. Um, and of course, as you know, the density of wisdom is in fifth density when people really get. So at this time, maybe you accept it with love and, and go by dedication, if not by wisdom, intellect. Okay, that is the fifth density because we are all almost quite a near to fourth density so uh, love we understand uh, a fourth chakra wisdom is slightly more elusive sometimes to get it's not information so sam do you want to add something to it yeah you know uh, i just want to say that uh you know like buddha uh he shared you know many valuable uh things in the session and when you know, like Anil was saying, you know, I kind of uh, remember uh, in some parts of the session. So, you know, like uh, his teachings are really profound. And you know, if you think about it, you know, if we just do uh, these things, you know, like it, they may seem very simple, but they are very nuanced and difficult. Like, for example, with attachment, right? So uh, many people, you know, they uh, may think, you know, attachment only with objects and you know, with their family and stuff like that, which ultimately everyone uh, has to uh, relinquish when they cross over, like Anil was saying. But also, I think, you know, uh, it can be at a certain level, like attachment with thoughts, you know, attachment with emotions. You know, some people, uh, they crave certain emotions, you know, and that's why what, what happens is that because they crave that emotion, you know, they uh, are in a loop, uh, stuck uh, in certain situations because they cannot 
um, get out of that. So, you know, this stuff is very deep. You know, it can even go deeper. Uh, I'm just sharing it from my own experience, but I think you know, like what Buddha was saying was absolutely uh, paramountly important for all of us to understand. And you know, these three teachings, you know, as far as I understand, they also align with you know what other uh, entities you know have shared. Um, you know, because they overlap uh, the teachings, you know, like many of the spiritual teachings are similar because obviously, you know, we live in a universe, uh, you know, which is created by the one creator. So as we go higher, you know, we will find out that we are all one. So many of the teachings, you know, they are obviously similar. So also the other thing that, uh, you know, Uh, uh, which the entities have given and uh, uh, you know uh, what I've noticed is that you know being in the present moment is very uh, very difficult but also uh, you know as time passes by you know we can uh, we can you know remember to uh, slowly uh, align ourselves with the present moment are you so are we fine with the internet or I don't know. On my side, the internet is fine. I have no idea why you're cutting off today. Oh, I see. I see. That's why yeah, something repeated in the middle. Yeah. So just I maybe now is it fine? Yeah, it's fine. No. Okay. So yeah, like I was saying, you know, like uh, the uh, present moment awareness, you know, thing. We need to um, practice. You know, like what what I do nowadays is like. You know, every morning I wake up, you know, I dedicate, you know, some time to meditation. I used to do that before also, you know, when I started uh, the channeling thing. Uh, before every channeling session, I just, you know, sit down for a quick meditation, you know, because it helps to uh, enter into a trance state. And then eventually I uh, do the self-hypnosis, you know, procedure on myself. And what I discovered is that, you know, if you meditate every day, you know, just for maybe like 10 minutes, you know, 15 minutes, uh, your mind will uh, somehow become aligned. And... Um, you know, that's uh, I, uh, what I wanted to, you know, add to this, Anil. So we shall continue. Thank you, thank you Sam. Uh, that's very nice. And I think uh, people, uh, you know, this is just a recapitulation people already know. And I am all saying is that sometimes we know, but we never put into practice. I think it's a high time and people who are desirous of uh, graduating should start even slowly and start practicing even find 10 minutes every day to start and be aware of this uh you don't have to leave as as sam very uh, rightly pointed out it's not even talk about money but emotion we are used to certain emotions like some people like to feel alive when they get angry and you know punch somebody and some people like okay this pleasure thing you know we have this uh, uh, pleasure and pain thing, you know. So always they feel, you know, pleasure and this emotion of pleasure, uh, and it's kind of a roller coaster. So incorrect, you 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 have to leave that this kind of uh, dopamine which is released in the mind and you get attached to it. So you need to be very calm. Uh, whichever situation is calm is difficult, but. Take something, it doesn't have to be money. So I can say, some people say, oh, money, without money, we cannot move in this life. But what about emotion, certain emotion? Find something which you are doing and which is you think can do without. Uh, and, and even if you come overcome one, it be, opens the doors for overcoming others because you find a way how you did, did it. So I'm... On that note, I will talk about today how to uh, clear an issue with roses. We talked about growing roses in the last podcast. In the last podcast, we learned how to clear our uh, aura uh, with uh, growing roses. Um, and the next time you feel nervous or fearful about anything, try blow blowing roses. Uh, do so while in the situation itself. Ideally, the fear is still occurring. If that is impossible, just imagine the situation at another time and blow roses. So, another way of working 
on a life issue using roses is to create a symbol or a picture of a problem area. For instance, if you have a problem trusting even a trustworthy people, for example, uh, you know, it could be your mother. I hope all mothers are trustworthy, but I have found some few which are not as well. So saying that mostly, you know, I hope everybody's mother is can be trusted. But there are a few examples. I leave that to you for discernment. Uh, you can imagine a symbol of a picture that represents distrust. You can even imagine a word distrust in a big bold letters and use that as you, your symbol. You will use the symbol to assist you in releasing picture emotion or a blocked energy related to your distrust issue. Then you can simply sit down and run energy while continually growing roses with your symbol inside them until the roses ceases to fill up and your imbalanced energy uh, you uh, don't have imbalanced energy anymore. Running energy while blowing roses assists you in releasing the blocked energy held in your chakras related to the issue on which you are working. So I, I hope you, you check on blowing roses technique in the last sessions. But just to clear an issue, let's just recap what you need to do. So uh, what exercise or what healing technique you need to do for clear roses. Close your eyes. Ground yourself. And do any need aura adjustments. Bring the cosmic gold sun above you and run the golden light along your spinal and the arm channels as described in the previous podcast. When the light is running fully, put it, it, it on automatic. Bring in earth energy through your feet and legs and allow it to blend with the gold moving up your spine and out your arms and head. When it is flowing smoothly and fully, put it on automatic as well. Leave the cosmic and earth energy running for the duration of the clearing session. Think of something you want to work on like a bad habit such as a nail biting or a chocolate binges. It could also be an attitude or an emotional tendency like a la lack of confidence, blame, feeling like a victim, distrust, shame or fear of spiders. Whatever you choose, imagine a symbol for your problem now. Just outside your aura, create whatever color rose comes to your mind and put the symbol inside the rose. Breathe deeply to assist in release while you watch the rose. When it is filled with the energy that you have released into it related to your particular problem area, uh, related to your dissolve the rose. Continuing blowing roses with your chosen symbol inside them, creating and dissolving them outside your aura until the final rose remains unaffected for at least 10 seconds. Then dissolve that rose. Open your eyes. So this is a very small exercise uh, and of course you need to learn before all the session because they are in continuation and I hope you will try that and clear some of the issues you have, uh, you know, we all have some issues. Fear, definitely we have all fear about health and many other things. And, you know, uh, shame, forgiveness, whatever. I think it will help you clear at least and balance it out. Uh, it balances your aura. Uh, I hope this will work and I will see you in the next podcast. Sam, do you want to add anything to it? Uh, no, I just want to say thank you, Donald, for sharing this uh, beautiful uh, clearing of emotions technique. Uh, definitely will try it myself. And I also want to say thank you to everyone. We will see you in the next podcast. Bye.